Welcome to Cavaletto Studios. I'm Chris. Do you know how to best take care of your knees? Well, you want to work to release the tissue above and below the joint. So today I'm going to show you how to get all four quadrants of the upper and the lower leg to help with knee pain. For example, when we have tight quads, it can pull the knee a little out of alignment. This can cause pain or even a slight misalignment and a shearing of the knee joint. Years of this can translate to a knee replacement. So let's get rolling. Today we're going to work again to help the knees and the ankles. So there's four parts to the upper leg and the lower leg. So let's start on the back side of that upper leg. So on your foam roller, you're going to want to scoot. I'm going to start on my right leg. I'm right dominant. So I'm going to scoot. So I'm off hanging off the roller with my left leg. So just the right thigh is on the, on the roller. And then I'm walking back onto my hands. Now, if this is hard for you to reach the floor, please feel free to throw a couple blocks, yoga blocks um, underneath your hands to get to the floor a little easier. I'm actually gonna go up to my fingertips because I'm my arms are not quite as long, but I want to make sure I lean forward slightly so I can really feel the weight of my leg on that foam roller. I'm gently going to roll forward and back, maybe about an inch. Just checking in right where that hamstring connects into that glute or hip area. Now the hamstring does cover two joints, so it's really gonna affect not just the knee, but the hip as well. Then you're gonna pause in the middle and I want you to gently draw your body side to side, east and west. Now if this is okay with you and you want a little more tension, you can cross your left leg over and lift your right leg off the floor. And again, roll your hips side to side. So you're really massaging and it, you don't need to be killing it, like pushing so hard that you feel pain. You don't wanna do that. You wanna just gently rock side to side. There's a lot of area to that hamstring back there. And then gently forward and back again. Just a little rock forward and back, just noticing. And when you add that pressure of the leg on top, it can be a little bit more intense when you're sliding yourself forward and back, that east and west. You might even feel it coming up in the inside, the inner thigh down towards that knee, depending on if you've got some sensitive tissue back there. Then I'm gonna slide myself backwards so that roller is moving down my thigh, closer to the knee. If it gets too much, go ahead and place that heel on the floor, and, and you can do that anyways. It, it, Let's the leg relax a little and then rock side to side. Again, feel free to have that left leg on the floor, your heel down. So play around, explore what feels okay to you. If you need to take a break and put your hips down on the floor, you can, and you can even have the hips down and just cross the legs. That's another option. So just moving side to side or crossing. And again, also depends on the density of your foam roller. <clears throat> So moving a little bit further down the back of that thigh and make sure you go. So we're going forward and back. We're doing both directions and then east and west. So it is an upper body workout when you're doing this as well. So you get a bonus here for that upper body workout. So we're gonna get all the connective tissue, go and have a seat on the floor as you get closer to the back of the knee. So we don't go directly behind the knee, but um, I'll scoot forward a little bit but you wanna go right above that knee joint <clears throat> and then rock it side to side. And again, you can have your hips off the floor or on the floor, whatever works for you. And then maybe a little bit of forward and back as well. Now go ahead and draw your hips to the floor. Keep the right left leg crossed over the right. Turn your right foot to the right, the bottom leg, and lean onto your right butt cheek. And then just gently push your leg forward and back. Scoot towards that roller, same thing, and then add a side to side. So you're getting a little bit more to the outside edge, the back outside edge of that hamstring on that right leg. A little bit more. So sometimes we might feel that our hamstrings, I hear all the time, my hamstrings are so tight. This is a great way just to take your time getting into it. Now we're working our way 
back to where we started. So my body's moving closer to the roller as that roller moves up the back of my thigh. And then I'm gonna come off the floor again to get in there a little deeper. Then go ahead and take that left foot, place it on the floor, and now start to draw circles with that whole hip and leg. Circling that right foot as you circle, you turn that whole hip area right and lean to the left and turn it to the right. And the leg is moving right and left as well. One more time and then you change direction, circle that whole leg the opposite way. You might start to get on the inside of that back of that thigh there. It can be a little tender. One more. Excellent. And then we're gonna have a seat. Go ahead and massage out your wrist because again, that is kind of hardcore on the wrist, especially if your arms are not quite as strong to hold yourself up and maybe you took more breaks. That's okay. All right, so we're gonna slide that roller out of the way and I want you to straighten out your right leg, the one we just rolled, bend the knee slightly, place your left ankle underneath the knee. So try to straighten it as much as you can, but it doesn't quite go straight all the way. Toe is up, I want you to lean forward into that leg. So just really feel that stretch to that right hamstring. And you might even feel it into the calf. So we're gonna get to the lower leg, but first we're gonna do the whole upper leg, all four areas of both of those legs. And just breathe. So next we're gonna go to the left thigh. So you wanna roll, move your roller to the other side. So come on up. And then you're going to sit on the far right side of your roller. So your left hip and glute are on that roller. All right, so I'm going to the outside edge. My right leg is flat. Maybe you're leaning more to the side if you can't reach both arms back again. Just play around with it, adjust. So you're starting out here, just a forward and back. And then a side to side. Use that foot on the floor for balance. Maybe you throw some pillows under your arms and you drop your elbows, that's fine too. Or you just really work out those arms, get that upper body strength. Or you can cross that right leg over the left. I'm pointing and flexing at my ankle using my heel for leverage. So this leg is a little tighter for me, my left hamstring. So I'm gonna start to lean and then I'm gonna rock left side to side, east and west. A little massage right up there at the top of that thigh. Yeah, I didn't know you were gonna get an upper body workout while you're at it, right? But it's good, it's good for the body. We need to work it. Go ahead and roll your body backwards away from the roller so the roller ro moves down your thigh closer to the knee. A little rock side to side. Readjust if you need to and then a forward and back. And again, you can have your leg off the floor. If you want more of a core workout, you keep your foot off the floor. It does engage the core a little more. You might not feel it, but it's working. It is working. And then a little rock side to side. You can also be on your knuckles if your wrists get tired. All right, and then we're going to move that roller. I'm gonna move back to the middle of my mat so I'm not scooting off the end. Move that roller further down. I'm still on the edge, forward and back. So hamstring, super good area. Again, like I mentioned before, where does the hamstring go? It crosses over two joints, the back of the knee and up and through that hip. So you've got it working in both directions, pulling and pushing. And so if it gets tight, what's gonna happen? It's gonna mess with the knee, pulling things out of alignment, all these different muscles and tissue that cross over the knee and attach to the knee can do that. And then we end up with knee pain or swollen knees or grinding improperly as we walk. And then eventually we end up with the knee replacement. Go ahead and rock side to side. So you're pretty close to the back of that knee now. Then rest the hips as you start to shift your body now forward again, back to the roller, moving the body closer a little forward back. Now this time you're going to lean slightly, take that left leg slightly to the left, drop it to the left hip. Again, you can be on that glute and you can just roll that leg side to side, a little forward and back, or you can lift it and then move higher up. Take your time doing what you feel good doing and breaks when you need it. The key here is to go slow and take your time. 
If you need that foot on the floor, if you need to take that break and rest your wrists and then jump back in. And again, it, if you're not feeling a whole lot, that's okay. You're still massaging that tissue of the hamstring. It's not about pushing really hard. Just find those spots and just wiggle in them. Little circle, maybe circling it around, drawing the circle the other way. Just repeating what we did on the other side. And then we'll lower those hips to the floor. Good, massage out the wrists. And then go ahead and move that roller out of the way. We're gonna straighten the left and cross that right ankle, goes under the left knee, sit up tall, that knee can't quite go straight, and then just lean into it. And feel that hamstring stretching out. Mmm, feels so good. So we did the back of both legs. Now we're gonna move to the outside, the IT band. So the IT band, is um, again attaches down around that knee so let's say it gets super tight what's it going to do it's going to pull that knee out of alignment so if you see people walking and their toes are out a lot of times it's because they've got maybe some tight tight hips tight it band so we're going to go back to that roller now this time we're going to drop to our elbows you're going to bring the top foot in front and i want you to bring that roller to the middle of your upper leg Middle outside of the upper leg, top leg is in front. I'm on my left leg. And I'm just gonna gently rock myself side to side, east and west, right across that tissue. Use that top arm for balance or support if it's too intense on that leg. Then move yourself up and down gently, forward and back, east and west on that tissue. Now we're, we're into a lot more ligaments, tendons here, along with the fascia. So there's not as much um, blood flow, nutrients get um, a little bit stuck because it gets so tight in there or, and also think of it as that it's not as flexible. They don't stretch like the muscles do. And then sometimes they get overstretched and then they get weak. All right, we're gonna move ourselves down the mat so the roller's moving higher towards our hip. And then you're gonna start to rock yourself side to side. So we went from the middle just a little bit higher and you can have your foot on the floor or off the floor, that left straight leg, and then move all the way up towards that hip. So almost feeling like you're going to go over that bone, go over that top of that hip bone. Good. Go all the way up and rock side to side. I'm squeaking on my mat here, feeling, and then goes back down over that little bone there where you feel that in the side of the leg and then rock side to side again. So you're right at the top, right below that, that, that hip joint, that, that, um, the outer edge of, of the thigh. Good, bring your foot that's on the floor flat, slide your elbow up, I want you to slide your body up the mat so the roller moves down your leg now. You're going closer to the knee and a gentle forward and back north and south on the outside. So IT band, relax your foot and then rock yourself side to side. Just a gentle massage there. Go ahead and bring that top knee all the way to the roller. And I want you to shift your body more towards the roller. So your belly is towards the floor somewhat. So you're more on the front outer edge of that leg and then just roll yourself forward and back. So almost to the quad, but not quite. So you're almost like you're in front of that IT band and then slide your elbow back and slide up that thigh. So this can be very uncomfortable on that IT band. Good, and then you're gonna drop to your hips behind that roller. Now I want you to place your, um, basically where your knee, bends on top of that roller, then scoot yourself a little closer so the roller is right above your knee, and then take your other leg and stack it. The knee is bent, and then just rock side to side. You're right above that kneecap, but you're rocking on the outside edge. It's right in here. Just find what's going on there. A couple more and then release. 
Excellent. So we're going to cross that leg. You can keep the roller underneath your right knee, that's fine. Just hug the left knee into the chest, cross it over and just give it a nice squeeze. So it attaches all up here into that hip and we're bending the knee. So we're getting that nice stretch right through that knee joint and the hip. So the IT band connecting down here into that knee. When it gets tight, it's pulling and the poor knee's going, help me. So we're helping the knees. We're gonna release. Now we're going to the other side. So go ahead and uncross that leg. You're gonna to drop to your elbow with that roller. You're gonna lift your hips and bring the roller right in the middle of your thigh, top leg. So I'm on my right leg, left leg is bent, foot is flat. Middle of the roller. And then gently rock your body side to side, east and west. And just notice the difference. Now you're on the right. If you're right-handed, this might be a little tighter. Your foot can be off the floor or on it. The goal is to relax as much as you can. I know, way easier than done. And then a little bit of a north and south roll. So if you're leaning into that and you feel super discomfort and you need to lean forward more or back, again, make those adjustments, roll the body towards the roller so the roller rolls up the thigh a little. And we're gonna rock side to side. So you're just gently working your way. And maybe you just do a little of this and take a break, get a drink of water, that's fine. Move up that thigh a little more, a little rock side to side, and a little forward and back, north and south. And then a rock side to side, moving it up a little higher. And then north and south. And then you keep walking it back so that roller now is gonna come up close to that hip bone, right top of the leg. Not the hip, the hip's way up here. We're down here at the leg and you're rocking again, side to side and then forward and back. Might get a little tender up there and then go over that, that bone right there at the top of the leg and rock side to side. So you're more into the glute and where the hip, that leg bends and that hip flexor right there, just a couple rocks and then you're moving back down. So go to the bottom side of that bone on the leg and rock side to side. And then we're gonna move it down. So sliding down that leg now to the middle and then we're gonna go past the middle a little bit so we can rock it again, side to side. And then a little lower, forward to back, side to side. Getting close to the knee. Lean forward into it now. Bring your belly towards that thigh a little, or towards the floor, excuse me. Lean into it, little tiny rock. You might feel some stuff here because we're getting into where the quad comes in and kind of takes over there. So you might be feeling some spots there. Then go ahead and lower that hip all the way to the floor. You're gonna keep your left, right knee on that roller, but move the roller so it's a little bit above Bend both knees and then just rock it side to side, little rock. If your neck is tired, feel, feel, feel free to draw all the way to the floor and just rock. And that might be easier for you too on your IT band because you can always do it that way and move the roller up the thigh halfway on the floor. So just options, playing around with it, try to roll deeper into that. And you don't even have to have the top leg on there. If it's too painful, keep it off and just do the leg without the pressure. And then we're gonna release and we're gonna sit ourselves all the way up. Keep that left knee bent over the roller and then cross that right leg. So it's forced getting a little extra stretch. If that leg doesn't bend that far, that's fine. You can always put it over the roller or even remove the roller all the way. Nothing, it's not set in stone. As long as we're, we never roll right over the joint. We're just getting all the connective tissue that attaches that can get tight and pull. And even if it's tight up here, it's still pulling all the way at the end. So you got to get all that connective tissue. So we did the back of both legs, the outside of both legs. Now we're going to do the front of both legs, the quadriceps. So quadriceps is the biggest 
one that I find that is affecting people's knees. And we're doing one at a time. So we're gonna go to the edge again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn over, I'm gonna go into a plank position. Um, and you can do both arms on the floor and the other leg, so my right leg is on that roller and my left leg is on the floor. And I'm just moving an inch forward and back, one inch. Now try to relax your top foot and just pause. Now if you can, bend and straighten that right leg. Try to relax at the bottom and then bend it again. You might even feel it pulling on that knee. Make adjustments with the upper body. Bend and straighten. Now turn your hips a little bit to the left. So you're going more to the front of that quad and maybe pull that heel, heel towards your left side of the body as you bend and straighten, getting a different area. Might feel a little better. You're right on the front part now. And then come back, shift your hips slightly to the right. And when you bend and straighten, you're on the outside edge of that quad. Oh yeah, I got a spot there. And then you're gonna straighten. And I want you to roll yourself backwards. So you're going down, body towards the roller, but your roller's going up the thigh. And again, forward and back, just a small little movement. And just having that knee on the floor just is, is a nice deterrent. It helps take the pressure off of the leg on that roller. So when you are done going backwards and forwards, pause and relax, and then try to bend and straighten that leg. And notice what's going on and where you're feeling it. Maybe you're feeling it up into the thigh. Maybe you're feeling it down into the knee. One more. And then we're gonna slide that body up again. We're moving up the thigh, forward and back. So if that quad gets really tight up here in the, in the meaty part of the thigh, it can pull that whole knee out of alignment. I have had that happen before on a downhill run. Yes, I did. It seized up and I could feel it. And I limped all the way home. And then bend and straighten. And I had to get my leg worked on. Couldn't compete in a race. So, you know, stuff happens. You just gotta... And that's where the foam roller was very helpful to working that out. But if it gets so bad that it pulls things out of alignment, of course, I went in and talked to the professionals and you can see your um, physical therapist or a chiropractor, as long as that chiropractor does myofascial release. If they don't do myofascial release, find one that does. And then you're going to slide up again, moving to the top of that thigh and forward and back. Because that's what we're doing right now, myofascial release. If you don't release the muscles, nothing else is going to move. It's just going to move right back where it was and then bend and straighten at the top of that thigh. So we're just about done with this whole thigh. I bet you're glad about that. I want you to get as high as you can towards that hip when you bend and straighten right to where the, um, the leg and the hip there connect that, that place where it bends, that hip flexor. All right, last one. Now you're gonna slide off. Shall we take a child's pose? We shall. We're gonna separate the knees, feet together. I want you to reach forward and just melt into that child's pose and feel the stretch through that right knee. And then come all the way back up and feel that right thigh. We're going to the other side. So I'm just gonna turn all the way around so you can continue to see. So this time I'm going to, right above my left knee, I'm gonna bring the right leg out to the side, onto the elbows, and I'm just moving myself very slowly forward and back, forward and back, massaging it out. And the toe can be tucked under or try to relax that leg. Shoulders relaxed and then bend and straighten at the knee. Now, if it's too painful to bend and straighten, just skip that part. Completely skip it and just breathe and rest the leg. You would just stay here and just try to breathe and maybe take pressure on and off of the roller using your knees and your elbows. Because this might be something you need to work up for, up to. And then walk your elbows back, move that roller up a little, 
forward and back. And I know this is taking a while, but this is long-term health for your knees, more mobility. And I always say, so there's a couple rules you want to remember. One, if it hurts, it means you need it. And then two, the good news is the more you roll, the less it hurts. And the more movement and mobility you have of your knee. So bend and straighten again. And I'm not saying it's going to prevent a knee replacement, but it can definitely help maybe prolong it. And then roll up again. Keep going. Body's rolling towards the roller. The roller's rolling up the thigh, forward and back. And then bend and straighten. And then roll back a little more, forward and back. And then bend and straighten. You're almost to the top of that thigh, and then keep on going up into that hip, a little forward and back, and some bend and straighten. And maybe you're done and taking that child's pose early. That's okay. Just isolating, good. And then once you're there, last little forward and back. And I'm just giving those options. You can do the forward and back and the bend and straighten, or just the forward and back. And then when you're done, we're gonna slide off that roller. And let's take a child's pose. So it's really good to stretch out around those knees. Roll with that roller forward, hips to heels. Now we've done the back, the outside, and the front. So now we have to do the inside of the thighs. So for the inside of the thighs, you're going to lay on to basically your belly on the floor. You can support your head. You're going to have the roller longwise next to you. And then I'm going to have you bend your knee. So I'm starting on my right side. My right knee, my right inner thigh is on the roller. And I have the roller above my knee joint. So it's never like on the knee, it's right above. Good, and then you're gonna straighten and bend that right leg. Straighten and bend. And just notice, hmm, has all, was all your pain, was most of your sensation and pain or issues going on like towards the front, inner part of that front thigh and now also on the inner thigh there? Can be a little tender. And then roll that roller up the thigh a little and then bend and straighten again. So think about like the inner thigh, those gracilius, the adductor muscles, they attach down around the knee joint and then they go up and attach deep into the hip. So if they're super tight, not only can they mess with your knee, they can throw your hips out of rotation and pull like one side can be a little bit tight, move a little more restrictive on one side than the other. And then what happens then? Then you end up with low back issues as well. So that, this is just a great preventative way to keep up your mobility. So we're gonna ease forward again or move that roller up, that inner thigh, straighten and bend. And then move it up the thigh again, straighten and bend. And just go as far as you feel comfortable. Going on this a little bit higher. And again, you don't want pain pain. You want to just have a comfort level, maybe a little discomfort, but not pain. And we're getting way up into that inner thigh, straighten and bend. So you might have to go a little more towards your belly, towards that roller. As, and you can even move that roller up and down that inner thigh. You can have the leg knee bent as you roll, or you can even straighten the leg as you roll. That's gonna make it a little more intense as you roll that inner thigh. One more. Now, when we're done, we wanna stretch that area. So if you've noticed, we've stretched each area somewhat after we're done. So we're gonna take the leg off the roller and lay onto our back, all the way onto your back. And then I want you to hug that right knee into your chest, whatever leg you just rolled, and then pull it out to the side, the right side. So I got the right leg out to the right, and then I'm gonna straighten out the leg. I'm gonna hit the wall. Now, option is you can hold your toe, maybe you're flexible and you can do that. If you can't, just let it go out to the side. <laughs> I have to scoot over, I'm hitting the wall. And feel that inner thigh stretch. So that's the goal here. You can even have your foot rest on a wall. If you're close to a wall, it actually feels really good. 
And just feel that inner thigh stretching out. Making sure you're not locking out the knee. So we did back of the thigh, outer thigh, IT band, quadricep, and inner thigh adductor. We still have to do the other leg, which we will. And then go ahead and bend that right knee, hug it into your chest. Rotate the ankle a little, a couple times, and then reverse direction. So we still have to do the lower leg. Go ahead and release and roll yourself up. We're gonna switch sides. So you're gonna go onto your belly, your other side, so you can roll that other leg. So go onto your belly and then bring that knee up, left knee on top of the roller, and then straighten and bend. Straighten and bend. So small movements. And then move that roller up the thigh, straighten and bend. And you don't have to spend a ton of time here, maybe like three or four movements with the knee bending and straightening, and then just move it up that thigh. And if you have more time, then you can do it longer next time, or just repeat. If it's painful, then just do a few and then come back each time again. It'll be a little easier. Especially if you stretch it after each time, you get in there, moving up that thigh, a little higher, almost there to the top, straighten and bend. You can do this while you watch TV. What a great way, you know, once you learn it, just practice it. You can roll that whole length, knee is bent, or you can straighten it and roll it both as well. And then you're gonna roll onto your back. We wanna make sure we get to all areas. So, so scooting on to the side of your mat, hug your left knee into the chest, straighten the right, pull that leg to the side, and then go ahead and straighten it out. So you're stretching out that inner thigh. So the nice thing is after working all these areas, the all four quadrants of the upper leg, this is upstream above the knee. We're gonna move downstream below the knee. So you got knee issues, you can't just work above the knee, you need to work the tissue below as well. So we're gonna bend that knee, bring it back. All right, so now I want you to just bring that roller right down, cross your mat by your feet. And you can stay on your back or you can lift all the way up. So another big one that affects the knees is the calf. So you're going to go above that calf. And again, you can go towards the edge. I'm gonna start on my right calf. You can always start on the left and put the leg down or put it behind the roller, whichever one you want. So you're going to rock that leg side to side. Now, if this is painful, you do not have to have the legs crossed. You can have the left leg on the floor or you can rock. Now I want you to draw circles, bending and straightening and rotating the ankle at the same time. So you're drawing a big circle on the bottom. And when you bend the knee, it goes right above the ankle, basically around the Achilles tendon, one more circle. And then I want you to change direction. Circle around, so you're pointing and flexing the foot and bending and straightening and then move it up to about the middle of the calf. And then I want you to bend and straighten again, and then start to add those circles. Add those circles. So you're moving the knee basically side to side as you circle the ankle around, and then make sure you go the other direction as you circle around. So right below the meaty part of the calf and above where we just were, and then move it a little higher, and that roller might move up on its own. And then bend and straighten and then start to rotate in a big circle. Now, as you're rotating, you're not hitting the back of the knee. You're staying right below it. So we're just massaging out that tissue, maybe a little rock side to side. And then I want you to move that roller down a little lower so you're right below the meaty part, rock it side to side. Move it a little bit lower again, rock it side to side. So we kind of warmed it up and then we're rocking. So you might find a spot, I found a spot. If you find a spot, pause on it like a knot or a tender spot and I just rotate the ankle. So if you found a few of those, take your time jumping back and then move that roller down, rock side to side. One more time at the bottom, rock side to side. You might even feel blood flow to the feet. And then you're going to keep that leg on top of the roller, 
slide your left ankle under, flex your right foot, bend your left knee and lean into it. And then straighten and bend. And once you straighten to a comfortable place where you're feeling that stretch through that calf, just hold. Just hold it there and breathe. So lengthening that whole, all that tissue behind the knee. So you're not locking that knee. And then you're going to release and we're going to go to the other ankle. So right above and then a little, little rock side to side. And then start to bend and straighten and draw circles. So you're rotating the leg side to side as you bend and straighten. That's my version of drawing a circle. So you're kind of drawing that circle with your knee because it's going straight and then bending and then change direction. And then move that roller up and a little rock side to side. And you can be laying on the floor this whole time. You don't have to be up on your hands. <clears throat> and then circle around. And then change direction, rotating the ankle. That rotation of the ankle is key here. Really, really key to that tissue. This is also helping the ankle. So we're also increasing that mobility of the ankle. Go up above um, the, into the meaty part of the calf here. A little rock side to side. And then start to bend and straighten and then rotate that ankle at the same time. I know, sometimes it's, it's a lot of thinking. We have to use our brains. Go ahead and change direction. Circle the opposite way. Good. And then move that roller down just a little bit so it's about right at the bottom of that meaty calf. Rock it side to side. Move it a little bit lower. Another rock side to side. If you find a spot, we'll circle around. I got another spot on this one. And then moving it down. A rock side to side. And getting as low as you can without hitting the heel, rock side to side. And then cross your right ankle under the left, flex your left foot and bend your left knee, and then straighten and bend. And notice what you feel. Maybe you feel it down through the heel, maybe the back of the knee. Hopefully you feel a little looser there. That ankle can stretch a little further. So with the rotation of the ankle, and the bending and straightening of the knee, we not only got the gastroc, but the soleus, that tissue underneath, that muscle underneath the gastroc, which helps change the angle, point and flex that ankle. All right, we are done with that one. So we did the back, moving on down. So we are going to jump straight to the front and do the shin. So then we can get the outside of those legs at the same time. So we will be moving on to the shins. This is great for shin splints as well. So you're going to be getting, so there's a bone on the front of that shin. I want you to go on the outside edge of it. So I'm gonna show you two different, couple options here. So one is you can shift. I'm gonna do my left first, just so you can see and bring my right leg out. And I'm just pulling that leg along the outside edge. You wanna maybe rotate the ankle. That will help maybe find a spot and super slowly work your way up. You're welcome to be on your elbows if this is hard on your hands. You can also cross your legs and sit your heel, hips to heels. And I'm slowly gliding. So now most of my weight is pretty much on that roller. If that's too much, then don't worry about it. And you can put one foot on the floor and just rolling along. The more to the outside you can go, the better. Really getting into that outer shin area. One more, and then to do the other side, you just shift your hips to the other side, crossing the ankles. Again, you can have one leg back if you would like, and just keep it slow, rotating along as you go, or sitting the hips back and massaging along. Great for shin splints, for preventing them or helping them go away. Rotating that ankle nice and slow. If you can feel tension there, can you imagine what your knee is feeling? It's like, wait a minute, what? So you got stuff pulling down, pulling up from the knee. So we're below, almost there. Excellent. Now you're gonna bring both knees in front of that roller. I want you to bring the tippy toes on top of the roller, not your feet, but your tippy toes. 
feet apart, knees apart, and then start to hinge your hips backwards. So you're really stretching the area. And if you want, you can just do one at a time, leaning your, I'm leaning my right hip to right heel, or you can do the left hip to left heel, or you can do both. And if you are comfortable, you can sit up and back if that bothers your knees or your anything else, just stay forward. And just feel that nice stretch. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So then you're going to roll that roller forward so you can hang your feet over the back. You might feel a little blood flow to the feet. And then I want you to roll backwards and land on the balls of your feet. So you can get a little stretch all the way through that Achilles tendon because we rolled all the back of there. And then we're going to sit all the way down on the floor. This is where you're going to need your tennis balls. So we're going to start with one tennis ball. And what you're going to do is this bone on the outside of the ankle, there's a, if you put, there's, your finger can go right in that little divot or there's some soft spot. There might be a little soft spot. It might not even be a divot. Maybe there's some, some tissue there, but it's, um, it's softer, but you want to go in front of it. Place your tennis ball right there and then place it on the, the tennis ball on the floor. So your foot is resting on top. You can have your toe on the floor or off. It's up to you. And you're just going to add a little pressure. So you're pushing that tennis ball into the foot, into that bone, and, but it's not going over the bone. It's staying right in front of it. And then add your hand on the heel and press down into it as well. Almost like you're wrapping that foot ankle around that tennis ball. It's not really a, much of a movement there, but believe me, the tissues in there are thanking you. So just a little pressure. You can even hold the ball of the foot and add a little pressure. So I'm rotating the foot down and I'm pushing the heel down towards that tennis ball. Then you're going to move that tennis ball up above any above the bone, but right towards the front. And then take the other tennis ball and just press on top. And just lean into it. And your foot is on the floor. And just do a little wag of your ankle. Little wag. And then move that tennis ball up the leg on the bottom and the top. And then just a little movement. So you're getting on the inside of the shin and the outside of the shin. So on that shin bone. So we did it. We easily rolled on that roller there, but it's a little harder to get on the inside. So you're just adding a little pressure to both sides. And then move that tennis ball up, add a little pressure. Not too much because you're right on the inside of that bone. But if you find on the there, you can find that ledge. You draw your finger, you can find the bone and that little ledge on the inside of it. So that's where that tennis ball is going. And then move that tennis ball up a little higher on the inside and outside, top and bottom. So this should be, should be gentle. We don't want to be pushing hard. It might not feel like much, but it is definitely working. Maybe you found some spots. Feels really good. So this is also helping our ankle mobility and helping the knee. So you go right up almost to the knee, but not quite. And then on the inside, this is where you might be feeling stuff, right? Especially up in here. I know my tennis ball is matching my pants here. <laughs> I did not plan that. A little pressure. So right there, top and the bottom. And then when you're done, go ahead and take your legs straight. I want you to just point and flex that ankle. It should feel pretty darn good. And you can see on top where that's working. Now let's do the other foot. And maybe your foot feels like looser, more blood flow. So start with the one. Now we're going to the other foot. So find the bone and find that spot right in front. That ball fits there nicely or at least right on top of the soft part. You don't want to be on top of that bone. Plus it'll just roll right off. So when you find that spot, just sink there into it, keeping that pinky toe on the floor. Just add a little pressure and then take the heel with the other hand and just a gentle press into it. The other leg can be bent or straight. Just get yourself comfortable and hold on to the foot and just rotate. It's a very small movement. It doesn't feel like you're probably doing much, but you are. You can even massage the bottom of your foot while you're at it. A lot of tissue under there and on top. Our feet should be mobile. It should be pretty bendy. 
and our feet, they stop moving too much as we get older because we don't work them as much either. And then that limits our balance as well, our range of motion. All right, so then we're going to move that up. So go above the bone, and you're going to find the above the heel bone there, right there on the outside. If you need to flex your foot, you can. So you're going above it and then a little bit forward so you're on the edge there. And then the other one is going on the inside and then just a little point and flex of that foot. So this is a gentle way to get into that whole area. This is another great one if you wear high heels. This is super important for your feet and your ankles. Go ahead and move that tennis ball up and bend and straighten. Oh, are you noticing a difference from one side to the other? I'm definitely noticing a difference on my right side. You might even feel it all the way down to the ankle. It's like night and day for me. How about you? Anyone feeling a difference? A little higher. So just point and flex. And again, however much pressure, I'm gonna to start to lean into mine a little. because I'm finding some spots, maybe massaging that tennis ball, keeping it again. You're not pushing into the bone. Keep it on the back side, almost like you're going a little bit closer to the calf. And then move that tennis ball up, mushing the two, and then a little bit higher. It's just a little easier to get this way too than if you can't get that on the roller. If you weren't able to get that shin on the roller, this is just another option. So we're getting in deep, point and flex that foot. And then a little bit higher. This is where you're gonna get into areas where you might feel it up closer to that knee. And then a little bit higher. And as you move that foot, can you feel it? You, you can feel what, what muscles are working. Because the ankle's not moving on its own. These muscles way up top up here by the knee, that is what's moving that ankle, it's plantar and dorsiflexing that ankle. And of course, it's controlling with the back, the calf that we just, and the soleus that we just worked on earlier. All right, so once you're there, we're gonna take those tennis balls out and then point that toe and then, and then flex and point. Notice the difference. Oh, I got a crack. I got an ankle pop. Hopefully you did too. So we're gonna do one more stretch to get the ankles and the calves and we're just about done. So hopefully your knee's feeling pretty good. So you're going to tuck your toes on, um, tops of your feet on top of the floor and just hinge your hips back, knees close together. So you're just stretching out and then rock side to side. Now, maybe your ankles don't, um, go that straight and maybe you're just up here and this is a challenge. Great option is to throw a blanket underneath your toes. So if this is painful, just do this and that's a great stretch. So just listen to your ankles. Oh, I match my blanket, look at that. Very color coordinated today. <laughs> I'm trying to say bright. Bright and shiny for our knees. It's a bright, shiny day for our knees and ankles, tuck those toes under now and let's really hinge back, push into the bottoms of the feet and rock your hips side to side. And so feeling that stretch all the way through the back of the ankle into that Achilles tendon, little rock. And then go ahead and have a seat on the floor um, you're going to go long ways on your mat and I just want you to do a nice gentle stretch with your right leg extended out to the side, left knee bent. Just feel that nice little extra inner thigh stretch, twist towards the right knee and just lean into it and then wiggle the toe. So just getting a little extra stretch. So all that tissue, the upper leg, so think of above the knee and below the knee, all the connective tissue we have worked today. Can you believe that took a whole class? So this is something that you want to stay consistent with to really keep up the health of the joints of the knee, the ankle, and including the hip. There's more to the hip, just the lower part, but right now just with that knee, that is key right there. And go ahead and bring that leg in and let's try the other one. 
and sit up tall, maybe feel the difference in what's going on in that inner thigh. Anyone find that their inner thigh on one side is tighter than the other or hamstrings? And is that affecting your knee? Question to ask yourself. And then lean towards that left leg. Almost there. Noticing the difference. And flexibility, stretching out can totally help those joints too. As long as you're not like hypermobile and flexible and that can cause instability, that's a whole nother issue. And then take your legs wide and just lean forward into it. Shake out those legs just slightly. And give it a little rock side to side. Getting a little into the hamstrings and the hip, the inner thighs and then come up. We're gonna bend the bottoms of the knees, bring the bottoms of the feet together. Little flap side. Flapping those butterfly wings. And then hug the knees together. This is a short little, little stretch in those butterfly legs. Good. And then take a nice tall seated posture. So hopefully your legs feel good. Your knees feel great. Walk around a little bit to see how they feel. And uh, practice, practice taking care of those joints. Take a deep breath in, reach those arms overhead. Exhale, palms to heart space. Thank you for taking care of your knees and your ankles with me today. Namaste.